Hello and welcome back to this part three of this video. Basically just creating a 2048 the game. If you watched my previous videos, the two other videos, I suppose you know what we're doing. And if you haven't, I kind of recommend you to go and look at them, okay? Because we've done quite a lot. So in the last video, just to memorize what we did, we created a function to call move with capital M, remember? <laughs> um, if you haven't watched the video, you don't understand the joke, okay? Well, it wasn't really a joke. <laughs> but uh, we have um, a function that checks if move is equal to 1, which is up, which uh, we're doing okay. So if we press our row up, then all the things should be shifted up. So we have a 2, we press up. Number 2 has been shift up. We have a problem, though. That we, we have 2 down 4. Let's see if we have another number. Oh, just refreshing to get random numbers. Um... Oh Jesus, let me see if I can get one. See what we have here, two and two. If I press up, oh my God, it didn't add up. And that's the problem we have. Because when you move, we should first push everything up, then add up the numbers that are equal, and then push everything up again. That's it, easy peasy. And you know, we shouldn't really, yeah, we should, okay? And there's other ways to do it, and I'm just gonna do use a lot of for loops, which is kind of stupid. But for now, it's quite easy, you know, to understand. And I don't want to start, like, you know, creating variables. And ah, we can do it this way. So trust me now. <laughs> eh, no, don't trust me. <laughs> okay, so we have everything that shifts up. So what we should do now, we should have a for loop again. Equal to zero. I have to be less. So you know what we could do? What we could do is check number by number. So we should check from this cell until this one here. So we should say i is equal to 15. i has to be less has to be greater or equal to zero and i plus plus and i love to have this thing of auto indentation that would be quite handy i don't know how to do it so you know how to do that in Atom, please let me know in the comments and if you don't well just don't so um you know we shouldn't go all the way to zero we should all go all the way to this number and that's cell number four so i should be greater than four than three yeah three so now we have a for loop, and we have to say, okay, check this number first, see if this number and this number are equal. And if they are, add them up, and add them up in this location, in the location up. That's why we're not going through this road here, because if we're going to check this number and this number, there's no number here. So, we check if uh, cell i dot num is equal to, Jesus, is equal to cell, and we have to do a little trick here. What's the little trick? I minus 4. Why minus 4? Well, I explained that in the other video. We're actually checking the number here. That's I minus 4. Remember, this this uh, 1D array, not 2D array. So we have a little problem. We could have done something, you know, but it doesn't matter. So if it is, if it's equal, then we say cell I minus 4 dot num is incremented. So we increment the number. What's going on? My shift button is not working. Oh, it's not shift. Oh, Jesus. I'm... <laughs> okay, so if it's if it's equal to the other number, we increment this one here. So if this one is equal to this one, we increment this one. Uh, we increment it here. So we say cell i dot num. And then we, add, um, we set this number to zero. So we say cell i dot num. Is equal to zero okay so if we try to do it now let's see how we do it okay there's no numbers equal I'm just trying to look for two numbers in the same row the same column that are equal nope there we go okay, we have two two and two so let's see what happens I press up okay let's see we have any error so inspect element Oh, we're getting an error. So, undefined is not an object. Evaluating i number. So, what are we doing? We're taking i is equal to 15, and i has to be greater than 3. Well, i is greater than 3. Oh, i minus minus, okay? So, remember, i minus minus, we're documented. So, we're documenting. So, now we have to go look for another number again. The same row that has the same number. Oh, we had one there. Just for, okay, we have 2 and 2. Should I press up? They all shift up and now that became 4. So that's working. 
Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut out the video here, and I'm going to do by myself, move uh, to the right, to the left, and down, okay? And I'm going to upload the code in the description of this video so you can look at it, okay? Because this video is going to be, it's going to take hours, so you have to do move by move, okay? So stay there, and I'll see you in a second. Okay. So we're back. For you, it's been a second. For me, it's been a day. <laughs> and that's because I had to do other things and I had to cut it off. But we're back, okay? And I did it. So basically, what we left, I think, that time is that we said if move is equal to one, then we had to do two steps. Well, three actually. We had to do first, if it's up, okay, we have to shift everything up. So we have to shift these numbers up, okay? So I'll show you now. We shift everything up. Then we add the things, the numbers that, the, that are similar, we add them together, and then we shift everything up again, because if we don't shift it up again, there's going to be a gap, okay? And I think that's the game, how the game uh, works. You can change the laws, and you can change how, you know, the rules of the game, and... But for me, that's how I think it works anyway, and I used to play a lot. So, <laughs> uh, and then I did the steps for moving to the right, to the left, and down, okay? That's about it. And I call up, one two, three, and four, okay? That's looking at your screen, anyway. So now, all we have to do now, okay? Let's just get this example. If we shift everything up, it's gonna add up, they're gonna add up, they're gonna add up. Let's see that's working. But every time we do a move, there should be a new number coming up to the screen, okay? And how do we do that? Well, we're gonna use the simple, if you watch my videos, <laughs> if you watch my videos, you would know that. I love a uh, pushing things to raise. Okay, I love um, stacks, and we're not going to use a stack at the moment, but we're going to do something quite similar, and that is we're going to create an array. We're going to call it R. That's just convention. Also, there's like good comments asking me why am I not using a um, global variables for width and height, and instead of just hard going sixteen here, we just use you know um, width by height and stuff like that. And I understand what the point is. Um, but, you know, just to make the video quicker and um, without have to, having to explain, you know, I just prefer to make everything quicker, but you're right and that's the way to go. So we have an, an array called R. All we have to do now is we can create a function called insert. So function insert, well, there we go. And this function has to go through every single item in the array and check if the number is zero, okay? So we do a for, a for loop, so we say var i is equal to zero, i has to be less than oops, indentation, okay, so i has to be less than 16, i plus plus, okay. And now what we have to do is we have to check if that number is equal to zero. So now we know if cell i dot num is equal to zero, what do we do? Well, what we do is we have to say, add that element or we could just add the index but um i would just say add the element to the array okay just to be cool and everything we could just say r dot push okay that's gonna push this item what's in the argument to the array and we can just say cell dot i okay we could just go cell i dot i if you wanted to but i think we could like save these steps if we do it that way just like matter of a uh, convenience so now that we have that, we have an array that has items in it. What we have to do now is we have to say, now select a random item of that array. And this is a way to do it in JavaScript, actually. In JavaScript, there's a function, which I don't really remember. But if you do know this, let me know in the comments, that you can select randomly an item from an array. Don't know how to do it yet. So. Okay, so we have to choose a random item from that array. And a random number, either two or four, as we did before in the first video, and add that number into that random item in that array. I'll do it, and it's a bit confusing to understand. So we have a, um, we can create a variable called run, okay, and that's gonna be a whole number. So we have to do round. Run is a function that's gonna round up a number, it up and down, and we're gonna select random. Uh, from zero to array dot length. Uh, yeah, that seems fine to me. Yeah, and then we can create another one called random, as we said before in the other video. And this exactly is a copy and paste from the other one. Now we could just create a function, but um, just too much to think about. 
and we're going to do either one or two. So it's going to be either one or two. And then if we multiply by two, um, we're going to get either two or four. Okay, so every time you do a move, either a two or a four will come up. Normally, there's more probability that a two than a four comes up. But, you know, you can just do an if statement and say if that number, either the probability is 0 0.7, do two. If it's 0 0.3, do four, you know, that kind of things. So we have two elements. And all we have to do now is we have to say there's two things. First of all, we have to select the item. So we have array rand dot num is equal to random and the only thing we have to do and i actually didn't think about it and i was just thinking about it i was like when i was watching the other video like seeing where i left off i realized we have to actually get rid of um everything that array we have to delete everything because every time we call the function we have to have a fresh start and because the global variable then we do have to um you know we have to um delete everything if we were to call the function here the var r okay then we really wouldn't have to because every time you call a function and the function's finished then everything is erased okay and it's a fresh start but because we call it in the global variable we have to delete everything okay so now i have a function that's going to insert a number uh, randomly between those zeros okay and now in the draw function all we have to do is insert a number and just call the function insert so now, if we want to play it, we have 4-4. Four, four. I don't know if you saw that. But it's adding numbers. Oh, you know what's happening? Whereas then, if there's more moves, and more moves is checking if there's any number left, uh, if there's any zero, if there's more moves, first ask for the keyboard, move, and move is already taking one parameter, and then insert. So we're inserting numbers, but we want to only insert numbers if we do a certain move. And how do we do that? Well, that's a good point. We have a variable a uh, called move, and it's zero if this we don't input anything in the keyboard, and it's one, two, three, or four if we select up, down. Okay, so we have to have a function that well, an if statement to check if move is not equal to zero, and we could just do if move because if it's not equal to zero, it's true. So if move is not equal to zero, it means that we input some value from the keyboard, then um, we call insert. Okay, insert. And this should do. Okay, so if I pressed to that side, which is for me the left, or for you the right, everything shifts, and there's a new number coming up, I think. Okay, so if I press it again, we should have a 4 here, a 4 here, a 4 here, and then some random number around there. And there we go, we got a 2 there. And then how we have 4 and 4. If we went to go down, these numbers are going to add up. These numbers, there's a new number coming up here, down. Now we're gonna go to the right. No, it's not going to the right. Ooh. And I think we got a little arrow. Did we? Yes, we did. Okay, so we have a little arrow, and that's same. Um, and I think that is because um, array round is equal to round zero array dot length. Array dot length, and these are the kind of mistakes I don't really like. I don't think I saved properly. Maybe let me see if I replay it again. Oh yeah, that's working. Okay, that's working. I think I didn't refresh it. Okay, so now it is working. So if I press down, it should add them all all up. And every time I do a move, there's a new number that comes up. Problems, okay, and I'm gonna leave it up so you can you know see if you can improve this and you can send it to me I I'll leave the code in the description, okay problems are Even if you can't do any move, so let's just say for example that um, You don't have any numbers that cannot up and you still press down There's a new number that's gonna come up, okay, so even though there's no new numbers that are gonna add up then a new number is gonna come up It's gonna insert this and we don't want that, okay, so it's a way it was obviously a way to fix it. Also, uh, this game is actually done in, we have a really low frames per second or animations per second. So, but if we had a really high in 60 frames per second, we couldn't really press a button for a 60, a 60th of a second. So that's another problem we have. And it's gonna add up multiple inserts, okay? So I'm gonna leave it in the air and you can try to fix it. And if you do, 
a, a make a better game, better graphics, you know, it's not really pretty. But if you do, um, send me the code, please, so I can have a look at it. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.